Uh, all right, Steve, final week of the 2021 NASCAR season. But before we talk about the championship this weekend in Phoenix, we have to go back to Martinsville over the weekend. Everyone's still very much talking about how that Cup Series race played out. We've had a few days to process it, but what are your thoughts on the Alex Bowman, Denny Hamlin showdown, those final few laps and, and everything that took place at the start finish line and, and since then? I mean, are we surprised? I mean, Martinsville has continued to deliver year after year. That little paper clip is my favorite racetrack that we go to. It was my favorite as a crew chief, and it only doubles down as my favorite as a TV broadcaster. There, uh, races, the races that are put on there and the performance that the stars put on are unbelievable. Being the last race of the playoffs before we head out to the championship race only turns up the intensity. So you look at Alex Bowman, a non-playoff driver, basically gets loose and takes out a playoff driver. It's that simple, right? I think even Alex Bowman said, hey, I didn't mean to do it. Um, you know, Denny Hamlin, why I may not agree with his comments. I love the comments. I love when drivers get out and air their grievances and says, Hey, that guy's a hack. He shouldn't do it. Uh, that's what NASCAR is built around. Didn't love the performance on the front stretch with the two cars. I think that actually takes away from the comments to be quite honest. I love when drivers get out from behind the steering wheel, take their helmet off, let the fans see their face and have real direct comments to the other uh, driver they have issue with but either way it's behind us now Denny Hamlin still advanced and Alex Bowman was the winner but if you don't have a ticket to Martinsville I'd buy it now because if you wait till next fall they're going to be sold out absolutely it never disappoints that's for sure and and as you just mentioned Denny Hamlin one of the four drivers that will be competing for a championship in Phoenix he told us earlier this season he's like I'm not sure if everybody knows this about me but I'm a driver that thrives under chaos. He's certainly taking a lot of that with him to Phoenix. Do you think he can channel that frustration into his first championship in the Cup Series? I do. I believe we've seen Denny Hamlin get to the championship threshold multiple times in different years, different rules against different competitors. In the end, he's always came up at least a step short, and I think this could be his year. Uh, a little bit off the radar for the regular season, shows up in the playoffs with a couple monster wins. Uh, now he heads out to Phoenix, a 46-time race winner, but still to be perhaps definitely the most active or the, the, the most successful active driver without a championship. But he's kind of climbing that list of the most successful ever to not win a championship. He would love to change that. I think he's a Hall of Famer either way. So I do believe uh, he's the driver you're going to have to watch. I do believe he could be a champion on Sunday. All right, we'll talk about Kyle Larson, nine wins so far, the regular season uh, champion, but he has yet to really prove himself at Phoenix. So do you think he goes there and, and can just show up and perform like he's done at other tracks this season, or will he struggle a little bit? It wouldn't shock me if he left Phoenix uh, not a champion and talks about the level of the event and how much he learned and be better next year, all the right talking points. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes out there, leads 300 laps and gets his 10th win of the year. He seems a little bit um, impossible to shake. Now, if you read some of his quotes, he has said that there are other events in, in his past, whether it's the Chili Bowl or some NASCAR races where he had the opportunity to win early in his career where the moment uh, was not lost on him and it affected some of his decision making. Now, the fact that he's aware of it, does that make him easy to put it behind him when he goes to Phoenix? You know, we don't know. I mean, statistically, he's the favorite, but until he can prove it on that stage, the biggest stage, um, I don't think any of us are willing to, to kind of just go ahead and give him the trophy. He still has to go perform. All right, well, add in the reigning Cup Series champ, Chase Elliott and Martin, Martin Truex Jr. Out of the four of them, is there a clear favorite? I don't have a clear favorite. I don't. People have forced me to make a pick, but I really think it's a dead heat. We talked Larson. We talked Hamlin. Chase is, is a champion. He's been there before, back with the same crew chief. We know he can do it, but yet to win it on an oval this year. Martin Truex Jr., the guy in the spring, he looked like a championship contender, winning at Phoenix. His car was fast, but it's been a little bit of a slowdown over the summer and into the fall. Can the 19 team kind of regain that ma magic? And the best part for all of us, practice and qualifying. We don't have to wait till Sunday morning to get a little glimpse of what all these guys have brought out into the desert. We have practice that starts on Friday. Yeah, and speaking of practice and qualifying, not something that drivers have had a lot of opportunities throughout this season. We've kind of watched it go away less than, I think, 10 times throughout the whole season. They've had the chance to do practice and qualifying before taking the track for a race. How does that alter their game plan and, and how much does that help them prepare for the championship? So I think practice is pretty simple. This is something they've done their whole life. They can go out and make laps and kind of verify that what they plan on racing. Qualifying is the difference, though. Um, qualifying is a mindset. You have to go out there and you get one lap. And if you make a mistake, you're going to start all the way in the back without qualifying this metric. Basically, hey, you're high in points. You finished pretty well. You're going to start up front again. So qualifying is the one that I believe can make a big difference. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see on Saturday 
who can go out there. And that's kind of the first real comp practice is practice. We're going to talk a lot about lap times, but remember, they're not trying to go fast. They're trying to learn, but in qualifying, they're trying to go fast. So that's the first opportunity for one of the championship four to measure themselves and perhaps claim themselves as the best versus their opponents. All right. We spent this conversation talking about the four drivers competing for a championship, but the rest of the field will be out there going for a win as well. How much of a factor will non-playoff drivers be? You know, I really believe this is the race where they finally raise the white flag. I think they're going to have to drive at 90 to 95 percent. They do not want to be part of the story. Now, I've said that through the playoff and I've been proven wrong. Oh, basically nine times. Every race has had a non-playoff driver involved. Uh, but I think this is the one, right? It's not about the playoffs anymore. It's about the race. We are in the championship race. So if someone has a good enough car that they can win at 90 or 95 percent, so be it and go prove it. But I believe that the championship four are going to be so focused and so dialed in, it, it'll shock me if a non-playoff driver has the ability to go up there and really kind of uh, shake it up against these other four drivers. All right. We'll see how it all plays out this weekend, and we'll see what kind of conversation we're having next week about how the championship four played out.